Okay, so suppose I have two point charges, Q1 and Q2. Q1 is four nanocoulombs, Q2 is negative three nanocoulombs. I just made this stuff up, you know. And I put Q1 at the origin, I put Q2 at this along the x-axis 0.1 meters away, and I want to find the electric potential with respect to infinity right here, 0.3 meters from the origin. So the first thing we need to know, remember, is the electric potential due to a point charge is K Q over R. And this is with respect to infinity. And that's important. Um, remember, the potential is really a type of potential energy which is due to a work by a force. So you have to have it over an interval. There's no way, other way around it. So you can't just have it at one point. When we say electric potential, we mean with respect to infinity, and that tends to work out just fine. So we set the potential at infinity equal to zero, and then we can talk about potential. So when, when we say potential, know that we're kind of lying. And that's okay. So if I... Let's just compare this really quickly to the electric field due to a point charge, where a K is equal to... 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. So the electric field is equal to K Q R hat over the magnitude of R squared. So there's two really big differences here. One, electric field is a vector. Electric potential is not. It's a scalar. Two, this depends on the uh, square of the distance between the point charge and the location you're trying to find. And that's only, uh, this depends on the distance. So this isn't too bad. Let's just find the potential at this point right here. It's just going to be V1 plus V2. So that's going to be, um, for one, it's going to be KQ1 over 0.3 meters. And this one's going to be plus K. Q2 over this distance, which is just going to be 0.2 meters. Now, you'll notice that Q2 is negative. So, but I, I put it just as Q2 because you need to put a negative charge in here. Also, uh, Q1 is greater, but Q2 is closer. So the electric potential due to Q2 is going to be more influential than Q1. And so if you put this in, and I, I'll give you a link to uh, code below for my Python calculation of this. But if you put in your value for k, q, make sure you enter this as 4 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs, okay, except nanocoulombs, uh, then I get negative 15 volts. Pretty simple. Okay, now suppose I want to do the following. Now, also, let me, let me, let me uh, step back for a second. And I'll do the, this one right here. Suppose I want to put a, find the potential right here, okay, um, where this is 0.2 meters above that one. Okay, let's do this in the most formal way possible. So let me redraw that picture real quickly. So here's Q1, here's Q2, and there's my observation location. So I need some vectors here. I need this vector. I need that distance. I don't actually need the vector. I'll call this um, R1, and I'll call this R2. So R1, and let's call this RO is the observation location. So that's going to be equal to the vector. Um, this was at 0 0.1, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 meters. And then I can say Q1 is at the location well, let's just say R1 is going to be final minus initial. So it's going to be this position minus that. So it's just going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0, minus 0, 0, 0, because that one's at the origin. So it's just going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 meters. Now what about this one? R2 is going to be the final location of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 minus the location where it started from, which is right here, which is uh, 0 0.100. 0, 0. So R2 is equal to 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 is 0. So I get 0 0.20. 0. And now you may say, duh, okay, that's so obvious. It's right above there. I can just get this distance. I don't have to do this vector stuff. 
and I understand what you're saying. I am who you are saying. Wait, I said that when I was in college. I said, this is stupid. I'm not going to do it this long way because um, it's just too much work. I can intuitively see that distance. However, um, what if these aren't at the origin and we have some weird location up here? You're going to have a hard time. But doing it this way is a better way to do it. So now I need to find the magnitude of these vectors. And I can say V equals K Q1 over the magnitude of R1. See how I've kind of made this into a, a program, right? Plus K times Q2 over the magnitude of R2. And now all I have to do is do this vector math. And in fact, once I do this, I can put these anywhere I want. In the calculator I'm going to show you, you can put these vectors, the charges wherever you want, and the observation location wherever you want. Um, so if I do that, and I did in Python, I got uh, this is 25.99 volts. The end. Okay, and the link code down here. Okay, we'll do some more problems.